let's go ahead and get started. Zotero. So in the old days, before we had fancy reference management software, there was a variety of techniques that people would use to conduct their research. Many students would engage in what I would call scratch notes, where references and notes and sources were written all over the place with the hope that somehow, some way, somewhere down the road, they'd be able to bring those sources back together and actually finish a paper. Ultimately, this was a bit of a mess and not a very successful method. So to, in a way, <laughs> in a uh, means to try to find a better way to do this, uh, many students were taught how to use index cards to categorize and tr keep track of their sources. While useful and far more organized than writing references all over the place, index cards were a lot of work to put together and somewhat burdensome when you got into the larger research projects that would take somewhere in the range of you know, more than 20 sources. So a few years ago, there started to be a whole wide variety of digital sources that were open for the public. Personally, I remember using the Son of the Citation Machine a lot. Um, the only problem with a lot of these programs is that, one, they were either very limited, or two, they cost money. Um, more recently, we've started to see some of these social book bookmarking features, such as Cite You Like and Canadia.org. However, they still don't gain the functionality that you would hope to see out of a full-featured reference management software. I will briefly mention that um, why I favor Zotero, EndNote Web has also become a very popular research tool, though I still think that Zotero does a better job and has more useful features, which is the ultimate reason why I support it and am giving this lecture report on it. So. When Zero T Zotero came along, it was a refreshing moment for me and other scholars as well because you didn't have to fill out those silly 3x5 cards anymore, and it made it a lot easier for you to keep track of your information. So the best way I find to think about Zotero is like an iTunes-like pro iTunes -like program, however, for keeping track of references and things that you use for your speeches and your papers. So. Let's talk a little bit why Zotero is so awesome. First thing, Zotero is free. I'm going to repeat that. Zotero is free. It, it's actually a type of software known as open source, where the code of the software is freely available and edited and maintained by a community of programmers. Now, there is a company organization behind Zotero. However, there it is highly, highly unlikely that we would ever see a pay version of Zotero down the road because it contains so much of that open source code. Another reason why I really like Zotero is that it is fast, um, literally as fast as you can type and with the automatic import features even faster. It also allows you to search your items which is something that was lacking in similar programs that would just dump things into large databases and make it difficult to find unless you had some sort of paper system to keep track of. It allows you to enhance your entries so you can add notes, images, copies of PDF files and such to the citations that you keep track of. And you can also include personal tags um, of your own to help you search for citations that may fall into a category. For example, if I was writing a speech on border technology, I may add a border technology tag to all my related sources so that I can find them easy down the road. Another thing that sets Zotero out from other programs is the built-in functionality to automatically capture citation information. Literally, it only takes a click, and on pages like Google Scholar, you're able to import several citations at once. Um, Note-taking is really easy with autosave, and again, it has that iTunes play -like, playlist-like interface. Another set of reasons why Zotero is useful for the student is that getting information out of Zotero is really simple and um, definitely helps improve your research experience. So it allows you to pick from any of 20 some odd research styles including MLA, Chicago style, and very useful to this course, APA. It also, um, for the most part, runs right in your web browser if you're using Firefox. 
Uh, however, there is a standalone version available for Safari and Google Chrome. Again, it allows you to save records and notes in any language, and you can even set it up to automatically grab PDF files and whole websites uh, that you're looking at in your research. The final reason why Zotero is the, probably the most useful reference management software out there is that it also has plugins to allow you to integrate it with your word processor. This means once you've established a library of sources and installed the plugin for Microsoft Word or OpenOffice, you then get a toolbar in your browser that allows you to automatically insert in-text citations and have Zotero create your works cited or reference page from the citations that you inserted. For a student like me that sometimes has to keep track of 40 to 50 citations for a paper, this literally saves me hours of time. So the whole point I'm getting at here is y'all should try Zotero. So let's talk a little bit about how to use it. Um, there's a couple of different ways that you can install and use Zotero. I recommend that you use it under the Firefox browser. There is, however, a new standalone version that works for Chrome and Safari that has connectors that work separate outside of the browser, and it's coming along pretty well, but it's still in a pretty early release. So if you're not using Firefox, you probably should for your heavy-duty research endeavors, and I think that it just works better that way. However, if you're really stuck on using Safari or Chrome, by all means, um, I'll give you a couple tips on how to download the standalone version and use it that way too. Alright, so let's talk about setting it up. The first thing that you want to do is go ahead and hop on your browser and point it to Zotero.org. Once the site's loaded up, up in the right hand corner you should see a link that looks something like this that says download. Go ahead and click that link. Now what will happen immediately after that is across the top of your screen a yellow or gray bar will pop up with a button on the right. You should go ahead and click that button, click allow, and then a window that looks like this will pop up. It will count down from five and go ahead and click install. Then at that point you should go ahead and restart Firefox. Now if you're not using Firefox and you're using Chrome or Safari and I haven't convinced you to try Firefox, you really should just try Firefox. But if you're not going to listen, you can go ahead and try out the standalone alpha version of it. So again, point your browsers, browser to Zotero.org, and then a little ways down from where you saw the red download link, you'll see the new Try Zotero Standalone Alpha. Go ahead and click on that. Then it'll bring up a series of options, and you should go ahead and pick the program for, your, for the type of computer you have. So if you have a Mac, choose Mac. If you have a PC, go ahead and choose the Windows link. At that point, it'll lead you through a series of prompts to download the program. Go ahead and let it download, and then on a Mac, all you have to do is drag and drop the program into your Applications folder. If you did it for PC, um, double-click on the installer, let it run, and it'll finish it. After you've done that, you need to go back to the Zotero page and install the connector for whatever your browser is. So if you're using Chrome, there's a link for the connector for Chrome. Go ahead and click on that. It'll install. I think it has you restart your computer, and then you're good to go. Likewise, if you're using Safari, click on the connector Safari, install it, restart, and you should be good to go. One thing to remind you that if you're using the standalone version, this is only if you're trying to use it with Google or excuse me with uh, Chrome or Safari, you have to have the standalone program open. So there's a program called Zotero now on your computer. You want to make sure that that's open before you try to use Zotero in your browser. If you're using Firefox, it's all integrated and you don't have to worry about any of that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about using Zotero. So most of what I'm going to show you now applies to Firefox. However, I think that even if you're using the standalone version, most of it will make sense except a few of the icons are up top instead of down in the bottom um, like the images that I'm showing you now. So after you've installed Zotero in Firefox, a Zotero logo will appear down in the bottom right hand corner of your browser. If you click on it, this window will open and this is what's known as your library. Now I'm going to briefly just kind of give you a quick tour on what everything is here. 
So over here on the side are the organizational folders. Um, they call them collections, but it's best to think of them as your playlists for your references. So what you can do here is you can click on this link right here and add new collections for each of your assignments or classes. What I usually do is I create a folder for each of my seminar classes and then I create sub collections inside those folders having to do with specific assignments. But you can organize it any way that you see fit. Over here in the center is where all of your references will start to show up once you've started adding some to Zotero. And then over here on the right is where you'll be able to view the specific information contained in each of those references. Um, across the top, this is to edit settings in Tidesos at Taro. This link here is to manually add a uh, reference if not using the automatic import feature. This one will automatically create a reference from a web page that you're on. The magic wand link, if you put an ISBN from a book or a digital, digital, ob digital object identifier, um, it'll go ahead and, like magic, bring, import the information for that citation in. This link allows you to add notes and other add-ons. This one allows you to attach files. And here is a search bar that lets you search your database. And the little X here allows you to close the window and minimize it back down to the uh, subtask bar. So let's talk about how we get some information into Zotero. Now, for the most part, in the research that you're going to be doing for my class, and I would imagine most of your other classes, you'll be using tools that have automatic import functionality with Zotero. So for an example today, I went ahead and went to the Chico Library, and I pulled up a book on immigration from the Chico Library catalog. And then I went to EBSCOhost and hopped on the Academic Elite Search database and searched for, for an immigration and found an interesting immigration related article. And then I opened up the ProQuest database and I found a recent newspaper article from the New York Times, I believe, that was um, on that repository. And as you can see, with all of these up in the address bar next to the address location, there appears to be these little icons, book, journal article, and newspaper. To get the reference citation for any of these types of sources from any of these major sites that we use, all you have to do is click on the icon and Zotero will automatically grab and import the reference and pull it directly into your library. So I went ahead and did that and pulled a few different sources into our library so we could talk about it. After you clicked and added them to your library, now you've got them and you can make changes as you see fit. So if you click on one of these, and I clicked on borders and blessings, then you can see that all the information for the source shows up on the right hand side. Now a note, sometimes when you import citations, uh, capitalization will get a little bit mixed up. In APA format, on titles of sources, you should only title the first letter of the title and the first letter of the subtitle and then any um, proper proper nouns. So if we look here we'll probably want to change that blessings and all of the um, subwords here except for Arizona to be lowercase. But it's easy to change and add, it infor add, it, add information once you have it inside your Zotero library. So a couple things on the item enhancements that you can do. First off, um, everything that I'm showing you here is the stuff and information that's located here on top of the um, reference information. So the first thing is when you click on certain sources, a view button will pop up. And the view button will simply take you to the web address associated with that source. Um, it, often if it doesn't have a web address, it'll have some sort of digital object identifier or ISSN and you click the locate button and Zotero will attempt to find that article for you if you need to go back and find some information you didn't have in the first time. The info tab is where the main chunk of information about your citation is. This is where you can go ahead and edit information about any citation you've put in. The notes tab are notes that you have created. So back in the old days when people used index cards, they would often write notes on the back relating to the 
use and need they have for that source. You, however, don't have to do that. You can simply create a note and connect it to its source and say, for example, this would be a good source to use for the second main point of my informative speech. The attachment tab will show you all the attachments that you have. Often, when I'm doing research, I like to grab the full text PDF of a source and attach it to my Zotero. That way, anywhere I go that I have Zotero with me, I can have access to the full text PDF of any journal article that I've ever used in a paper. Tags are ways that you can give search features to individual uh, citations inside Zotero. So if you have a special tag that you want to add to a series of citations so that you can easily find it later, you can go ahead and do that. Do keep in mind that you can also organize your citations into collections and keep track of them that way. Another useful feature is the related feature. And this allows you to go ahead and connect a series of citations together. That way, if for example, you wanted to keep all of your white papers on technology for a given um, speech topic connected, you could do it through this means. So, as I was alluding to earlier, there's a variety of different sources, source types that you can add to Zotero. I'm not going to go through them all, but as you can get from looking at the screen here, there's a wide variety of sources that have their own special way to be formatted in a paper that Zotero can import and take care of you. So for example, if you wanted to cite a YouTube video, Zotero has a function for that. If you want to cite a thesis or a conference paper or even a radio broadcast, Zotero can take care of that too. So now that we've talked about putting information into Zotero, let's talk about some of the ways that we can get information out. First of all, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. First of all, you can start by just selecting a chunk of citations, right clicking, or excuse me, dragging those sources onto a Word document or an email page or pretty much anywhere, and Zotero will automatically create the source in the type of setting that you have set as your default. Another way is you can select a several sources, right click on them, and tell Zotero to create a bibliography from the selected sources. It'll bring up a window that looks like this, and then at this point you can select your style for this class, APA 6 edition, and you can either save it as an RTF file, save it as an HTML file, or copy it to the clipboard. I usually find copying it to clipboard works the easiest, because then you can just go ahead and paste it in the handy set of templates that I used for you. And then, for some reason, partially covered up here, uh, the final way to get information out is that you can use those built-in word processing plugins and Zotero will go ahead and take care of the creation of both in-text citations and your references page for you. So let's talk a little bit more about that. So if you're interested in using the full functionality of Zotero, you should download the plugin for your word processing program. I use an EO, excuse me, I use OpenOffice, and so that's the plugin that I've downloaded. But if you use Microsoft Word or Neo Office or any of the others, go ahead and download the plugin for that. They work basically the same. So again, navigate on to Zotero.org. Halfway down the right hand side, you should see this link download word processor plugins. Um, it'll in Firefox, it simply installs another plugin for Firefox. Um, in the other browsers, I think it's going to do something slightly different and install a standalone version of it. Once you've done that and restarted your browser and your word processor, you'll notice that a toolbar appears that looks like this. The toolbar allows you to do a wide variety of things. First off, if you click this one in the far left, this is what allows you to insert in-text citations. So by clicking this button, a window like this will pop up. You can navigate to uh, the sources that you have for a given assignment, click on them, click OK. You can throw a page number in if you're doing a direct uh, direct quotation, and boom, you'll have that in-text citation. Uh, if you need to edit it down the road, you can just click on it so in your paper, click the edit button, and it'll allow you to do it. This one allows you to insert your references or works cited page at the end. This allows you to edit your references or works cited page at the end. This one is a refresh button if you just want to refresh changes that you've made in Zotero for, since last time you opened a Word document, settings, and don't worry about the link button. 